And of course, SQL Server has variables. Variables are identified by an at sign, both in the declaring of the variable and in every time you use the variable. And if you haven't seen T-SQL code before, I know this looks pretty screwy, but this is how it works. Another difference between T-SQL and other languages is instead of dimming the variable, we declare the variable. And all the data types that are available when creating tables are available here when declaring variables. So in this case, we have two variables called test and test2. The first one's an integer. The second one is a variable character length and the n in front of it means it's Unicode, so we call this an nvarchar variable. So if I simply highlight and execute the declare, it declares it, the batch ends, and the variables go away. I can't now come down and select test and test2. It'll say we have to declare them because the scope or the life of a variable is only within that batch or within the stored procedure. Let me give us a little more room and we'll walk through and test out some more about the variables. So if we declare them, creating the variable, and then select, you'll notice another factor about variables, and that is that when they are created, they're created with a value of null. They are not created with some kind of initial value. They always begin with null. So whenever you want to work with a variable, you can't just create it using the declare and then start incrementing it, because if you increment and say set variable equals variable plus one, well, it started out with a null, so a null plus one is still a null, and it will never have any other value than a null. So you must always manually initialize your variables, and in this case, I'm going to initialize them to be test equals one, and test two equals just a value. And then if we select them, you'll see that the first select returns nulls, and the second select returns the values. And just to prove out that Go terminates the batch, ending the life of the variable, if we select all of this down to the final select past the go, we actually get a message saying we must declare the variables. That message is being generated by this select. And if we look at the result set, we only see two result sets because this select generated an error rather than generating a result set. Now there can be a lot of confusion about when to use the set command to assign a value to a variable and when to use a select command. But it's actually very simple. If you want to refer to a table, some type of data source, specifically if you need to use a from clause, use a select command. If you don't need to use a from clause, stick with a simpler set command. It helps SQL Server optimize the use of set versus select. So to demonstrate that, here's some code very similar to what we had before. We're using temp ID and temp last name as two variables. Temp ID I'm going to set to 99. And this will go ahead and initialize it. Now I'm going to select temp ID equals person ID and temp last name equals last name. And this is another use of the verb select in the fact that we can actually select and assign data that comes from a table to a variable right inside of the select command. So let me switch to the family database and then execute it. And we have one result set returned. The result that returned was actually from this select. The first select did not return a result set. It assigned values to the variables. So what do you think happens if no rows are returned and we're trying to assign values to a variable with inside the select statement? Let's go ahead and test it out and prove out the behavior. We declare the variables. We'll initialize temp ID equals 99. Now in our select statement, we're going to try to find the person with an ID of 100. We know there is no such person in the database. And let's see what we end up with a result. It remains 99 because the select statement was restricted by person ID equals 100. Since there is no person ID equals 100, it's as if the select statement does not occur. You can almost logically think of this as saying, where exists a person with ID of 100, then execute the select statement and assign these variables. So if the if is not true, the select statement does not take place. Now one of my favorite features of T-SQL is the fact that we can use variables right inside of our query code without having to do any string manipulation or building up some type of string and executing it. So let me switch to OBXKites. And here we're using a variable called product code 
assigning that as 101, then using that product code right in a WHERE clause. And sure enough, it works fantastic. If we really want to push variables to the limit, we can use multiple assignment variables. And let me walk through this because it's sort of strange. We declare a variable and initialize it to nothing, just two quotes, so that it's not null. Then in the code, we're going to select variable equals variable plus some additional values. To walk through this convert, just to make sure it makes sense, A is the name of the table. That's the table alias. D is the date begin. And we're converting it to varchar15 using date style 107. So every time the select statement hits another row, it's going to take what's already in the event dates variable and append to it, or concatenate to it, the next date converted to style 107 and a semicolon, which is actually pretty cool. What we're going to end up doing is building a common delimited list right within one select statement. Once the variable is fully populated and the select statement completes, and then we're going to select, and we're using the left and the length just to trim off the very last semicolon. And this produces a nice common delimited list, denormalized, turning that list of rows into just one long wide column. Now in the spirit of full disclosure, let me tell you that many developers feel that this is a hack because it's undocumented and you cannot logically enforce the order of the data. Because this is in a subquery, we can't put an order by in here, so you're going to get the data in whatever order it happens to be returned.